Okay, hi. I'm going to talk about uh, system fault lighting update. So I'm Hanna, and I'm chair of the national body meeting. The committee. I'm a uh, chair of the Russian study group, and also an author of the CTRE uh, library. You probably heard of it. I did it for three, four years ago here. For it. And I'm also working in Jan at the Sina Principal of Chile. Uh, in 2023, uh, it's a slide but mostly working. And uh, I can't present everything. There are definitely a lot of acceleration, desolidation, and supporting code. And everything is in namespace Luna. And I'm using Pira code with the ligatures, which not for me to do this. Okay. The premise of this system is I need to uh, update an object in uh, application, which is installed on this computer, whenever I need, and I mean uh, even every few minutes, and I need to do it quickly. Got it. So usually when you update an application, usually update executable if you have data only there. Or you can update resources like textures, database, Whatever. And but generally, it's a state application you want to update. It can be, it's just a state. And state uh, should be immutable. It shouldn't change uh, based on user input. The state is immutable and it should be consistent and secure. So whenever, whenever uh, uh, you ch uh, something is damaged, you should detect it. And also, uh, Every state is representable as a data structure because everything is a data structure. Maybe just vector of bytes, it can be some sort of map or whatever. But generally, you have, a, you have some like database which is just map of string to string. You have some task in your application which is using the uh, database and you have some algorithm to update it. That's like general, like how update works. Updating mechanisms can be every time you uh, do something, just replace everything. Download it, replace everything. You can have additional like overlay over your existing data, so you're always adding. Or you can have def differential updates. Think BSDiv. But generally, it's a state n plus one is just state n plus difference uh, of two previous states. You can. Uh, represent this uh, uh, difference function as a matrix or as a graph. So you have in version A, then you update to version B, and version C, and version D, and version E, and so on. But usually, uh, not all your clients will update everything from version 1 to version 2, version 3. Especially if you are going to vacation and you return back, you don't want uh, to download 1,000 files. So you need to have like a shortcut, updates from different version to maybe between major versions or bigger one. So let's say you want to update from A to E. What you will do? You can just go from A to E, but if you don't see the graph itself, Let's, 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 we need to update from B to E. What will you do? You don't know what to download. You can go from B to new version, but uh, that implies that you need some, some sort of list or like how you find the way from B to E. No. Uh, if you, uh, I prefer everything, uh, have everything immutable, so you can go only backward. So you will download version E, some metadata of it, and you will look backward in time and find a, find a path to B. If there is none, you will search for the closest uh, point to B and then download it and then you will find a path. So, how do you represent the link, the arrow between states? It can be a file name with version number of both versions or name of the release, like 
uh, production or 1.0 or whatever, or it can be identifier of its content. You can actually name every object uh, by hash of its content. So hash value of your content is some sort of a pointer for you. It gives you unique value for its content, and uh, uh, the content cannot be muted, mutated because the hash represents also checksum, and uh, so you cannot change it. It uh, creates content addressable uh, solution for you, so you can name file as a hash of the file, and you, you can always find it easily. And also, it makes your data immutable. And it's really easy to cache because if you cannot change the content and you store it on some web server or CDN, it will never change. And also gives you transitive trust. So if you, uh, if uh, some version A uh, uh, points at version B and B points at version C, the hash of A actually uh, contains hash of B and hash, uh, hash of B contains hash of C. So let's, uh, let's say we have update graph of three version, B, C, E. And you, uh, but uh, first you need to represent only metadata about it. Metadata is just a small file containing information about previous versions and its content. And about uh, content which you are supposed to have, if you are on version E, you will have subject of version E. And between uh, versions, there is a delta file which contains metadata of previous version, so let's say C uh, thick, and uh, delta between C and E. And also some of the metadata can uh, also contain pointer to version, uh, to snapshot, which is serialized snapshot uh, subject. Snapshot B is just serialized version of sub subject B. Okay, subject B is, if you unpack snapshot B, you will get subject B. If, uh, if you uh, take subject B, apply delta B C, delta C E, you will get subject E. And if you unpack snapshot B, apply delta, same. It's just like applying numbers. So we have this graph and suddenly your application doesn't have any data on its own. You are doing clean install and uh, you want to uh, go be on the latest version, C. How you will uh, initialize your application? You will look for the uh, path to closest snapshot, a snapshot. And so you will download uh, only possible path to B. That's how we will get B. And you will download delta uh, AB. That's how you will get A. And then you will get snapshot. Deserialize it. That's how we will get subject A. Then apply delta. That's how we will uh, get subject B. And another delta. And that's how we will get subject C. OK. Then uh, we need to model the graph with vocabulary types. So we will start with values, nonce. Uh, the most useful uh, thing uh, is the hash value, representing hash or hash view. And it can be, uh, it can be just uh, array of bytes, and it can be span of bytes. Is this acceptable for you? But uh, what uh, if you have a function which takes a hash and span of bytes? Uh, will something stop you if you mix the arguments? So I prefer to have uh, strong types. So let's uh, let's have uh, like a structure hash representing uh, that is like a wrapped array in it, and we need to implement constructors, comparison, uh, like iterator support. But it's a lot of code you can mess mess up. So what I'm doing is actually using uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, also hash view, comparison for hash view, and et cetera. But what I'm, what I, what I'm doing is actually uh, using inheritance. So I will create a type hash, which is just std array of bytes. And uh, will, I will take just a constructor from it and create my own constructor uh, and initialize it. 
and it's much less code to mess up. I prefer code which I don't need to write. Then uh, I have hash view, which is just span of bytes. Uh, we'll take the constructor from this span, uh, uh, take my constructor, uh, which uh, is converting a hash to hash view, uh, implement comparison, which just function lexicographical compare three way, uh, comparison for equality. And then I can create a tagged hash, which is just another layer of hash, because hash is just some bytes, but the hash is some, uh, some hash with meaning, like MD5, SH1. So we have the ta ta tag of length, we have a uh, hash of some length, a uh, constructor for it, and then we have also hash, tag the hash view with uh, proper, uh, proper conversions. And then we can have like uh, tag SH1, SH256. And then we can have SH1 type, which is just tag hash of crypto or SH1. And you will never mess up because you cannot uh, never put uh, some random bytes instead of your hash. Okay, so uh, conversion is sim simple. You can easily convert array, which is just value to reference type span. You can convert hash value to hash view or tag value to tag view. Implicitly and explicitly, you can go up, uh, upward, but you, you need to do it explicitly. So it's readable in your code and you can easily uh, like see what's going on. Okay, so we have like a hash value and now we have like metadata type. Metadata type is uh, something which cont contains a hash of, of subject, which is the data structure we are updating hash uh, which is representing color of the graph, timestamp uh, when the metadata was created, list of delta links uh, to previous states, optional link to snapshot uh, content, and then a hash uh, of itself, because this is like a structure representing not a serialized section, serialized, serialized uh, object, and also uh, optional of bytes uh, representing the metadata in serialized form. Okay, then you have delta link, which is uh, just previous timestamp of previous metadata, hash of, uh, of the delta and distance to snapshot, closest one, and then comparison uh, between delta links. So we can sort them uh, by the uh, time and for equality. Okay, so delta is a really simple object, which is just uh, metadata and uh, some patch, just bytes, because uh, this update mechanism doesn't care what you are updating. It's done uh, in generic way. Then snapshot is just uh, bytes of some content. Again, uh, if you serialize something into bytes, I don't need to uh, know what, what is it, just bytes. Okay, so identifier of object is a pair of hash and type. Text hash of something, type, comparison for type, and uh, also operator slash, because you want to uh, create a URL or something from the identifier. So you can put a prefix of like CDN from uh, what, where you are downloading it, and the uh, name uh, hexadecimal uh, serialized version of the hash. So you put like somewhere, blah, 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 and uh, you will get extension of type. And types are just metadata, snapshot, delta, and alias. Alias is special type. If you have graph representing your uh, updating, update uh, mechanism, you know you have version A, B, C, but uh, how, you will, how you user, your application will find what's the latest version. You need to create alias. And you can have multiple versions like stable, beta, but what you need to do is, uh, because uh, everything in the graph is addressable by, by its content, you cannot do it for alias because alias, the name will stay same, but content will change. 
So actually, uh, alias is not addressable by, con by its content, but uh, by uh, its name. And then you can update it uh, when you say your beta is stable enough to make it stable. So alias is just met a copy of metadata stored under name, latest. And it's not hashed by its, by its content. But you can actually hash, uh, because everything is uh, named uh, in hash name, you can just uh, hash the name itself. But uh, you should use a different extension, uh, so uh, CDN uh, will cache it differently. Then we need some, some sort of function of the serialized bytes into object. So object, any object is just a variant of metadata delta snapshot with, uh, again, inheritance used to, uh, uh, to take uh, everything I need. Uh, I take the constructors and I have uh, three functions, uh, which gives me uh, pointer to metadata. If they are metadata, pointer to delta. Question? Uh -huh. What is std uh, is a function which will take pointer to a variant, and uh, it will give you pointer uh, to the type you ask for if it's there, and otherwise no pointer. So you can ask, uh, give me metadata, and it will give you pointer to metadata if they are metadata, etc. Et and then we have like a wrapper for the message in binary format. So let's say protobuf with object type, metadata, uh, patch, snapshot, and signature. Signature is just cryptographical signature of it. And then we have verbs for the graph. We have, we have nonce, and now we have verbs. So first, uh, we have fun a function which will unwrap and validate the object, takes identifier, and takes bytes of the content because we just got a file from internet, just, um, it's just bytes. And then we will uh, return any object, and then we will deserialize the wrapper uh, into something. And if the type is actually metadata, and we have metadata uh, value there, and we have signature there, we can validate metadata, by, uh, provide the ID, metadata and signature and content uh, itself, original content. If it's delta, and we have metadata and patch because delta needs to contain metadata and patch, we can validate the delta with, uh, delta with ID, metadata and patch. And if it's a snapshot, we just take, uh, and snapshot part is there, we can just take snapshot with ID and uh, content. Otherwise, it's just exception, something is wrong. Validate metadata function takes the identifier, content of uh, the metadata, signature, and uh, whole wrapper, whole the object as you download it from internet, and gives you metadata. First, if ID is not metadata and uh, or alias, you ask for something else. Then you need to calculate hash of the content. And if you ask for metadata, and hash is different than uh, the content, then uh, checksum doesn't match. Then you can uh, validate a uh, signature against some sort of trusted, trust, trusted keys uh, and signature, and if it doesn't match, that's uh, mostly useful in terms of uh, alias because you don't have hash, expected hash, but you have signature, so you can validate it too. And if you uh, did it, you can deserialize the metadata, metadata itself and uh, return the object as a result. Uh, then also provide the calculated hash and or original bytes serialized back to vector from span, and that's all. For delta, it's similar. You will take identifier, metadata bytes, and patch bytes. And then uh, if you didn't ask for delta, obviously error. Then you will calculate hash of concatenated metadata bytes and uh, patch bytes. And if it doesn't match hash you ask for, just throw exception. And then you just initialize the metadata, provide the hash of the metadata as you calculate it, and return delta object with previous metadata and patch again from the uh, span into vector. Okay. And if you validate its snapshot, 
Again, you will check for the uh, type, calculate the hash, and if the hash doesn't match, again, and otherwise you will just return snapshot, which is just vector of bytes. Uh -huh. Uh, it's just uh, energy piping, so uh, content is spanned, so I pipe it into std ranges 2, which will materialize it into vector of bytes. Okay, update mechanism. Uh, so uh, you have uh, you have like metadata of C and subject C, you own it. It's just some sort of object you are updating. And uh, your application holds some sort of pointer to C, so uh, in terms of application, the graph, it's not there. You have only the state and subject. And then when you, when you update, you will get new state and new subject. And again, and when you uh, re release the uh, uh, state, it will just disappear. So state type is metadata, const, and subject, because you will never change uh, any of it. You own it, but you can only read it. But I'm using a shared pointer. I know it's controversial, but a shared pointer is really useful for it, especially if you have const t shared pointer. Then there is a function which will uh, give you hash of the current state, which is just hash of the metadata. Color, which is a uh, color of the graph. So for example, if you decide uh, to create new graph completely and uh, force everyone to update, uh, if there is no path between one graph to another, another then uh, you need to change color of the graph so the application can detect it. And timestamp of the uh, state is just timestamp where metadata was created. Could you repeat the concept of color here? Uh, yeah, uh, all, uh, like all update graphs have uh, like uh, color which is uh, hash of the first metadata you ever created for the graph. So if you have like two graphs and uh, there is no path between them, you need to detect it somehow. Because you, you, uh, as you are downloading, I will get there for, uh, uh, later in presentation, you, uh, you need to uh, know if there is a path between state you, are, you have and state uh, you, are down, uh, you are updating to. If there is no path, you need to uh, change the mechanism from delta updates to full update. Okay, shared pointer, const t. I know uh, share pointer is for some uh, controversial t uh, topic, but if you have const t and not just t, you cannot create a cycle, so you will, it, it will always be uh, released. Also, uh, behaves as an immutable shared value, but uh, because it's const t, you cannot change it. So uh, if you get, uh, you don't need any, uh, no locking because it's const t. It also saves memory because you don't need to create uh, many uh, copies of your uh, payload because uh, what, uh, usually in, update, uh, in application when you update something, it can be 10 megabytes, 20, 100 megabytes. So you don't want to copy this. So we have graph. We are in version B. We know from version B that there is path uh, to A. And we uh, suddenly we released version G and we need to find path uh, from them. So what the application will do, will download metadata of G and learn there is path to A and F. And now the application needs to choose uh, what needs to be downloaded next. And uh, for that, it's always better to uh, choose the uh, oldest uh, no metadata uh, node which is newer or same as B. So in this, uh, in this case, I will choose E. Choose it by the yeah, exactly. Because uh, timestamp is always growing and you cannot, uh, because it's immutable, you cannot change it. Uh, so it's sorted by that. And uh, the graph has uh, like, um, there is a constraint that the, uh, in the graph, there is always path from one node to previous one. So, in this time, uh, uh, I will choose C to download, and suddenly I have whole path B, C, E, G. But the graph is much more complex. But as an application, I didn't see it. So, function which will uh, help you select next uh, step in the graph takes metadata you are currently in, 
uh, metadata, you just download it, sorry. And uh, state you are current in, it can be empty, it can be null. And it gives you identifier of an object you, want, you need to download to, uh, to find the next step in the path. So if you are in some state and you are not doing full install, uh, like restore or uh, full installation, and color is same, you can uh, uh, continue. But if a color is different, we need to change the mode into a, a full restore because there is no path in, the, uh, in between nodes we have. If we, are, uh, if we still have st uh, state and timestamp uh, of our metadata is older, timestamp metadata we don't, just don't know that, is older than uh, current state, which means we, we, we were asked for restore or uh, going backward in time, we cannot uh, find path we need to do full, uh, full restore. Then, uh, if we don't have state, current one, and there are no delta links, there must be uh, at least one snapshot link, and it, uh, which means we need to uh, download snapshot. But if we have state, uh, we will look at the delta links, filter them uh, by function, which will look at them, or, uh, we will fil filter out all the links which are not, uh, uh, which are uh, leading to all the metadata that we have, and uh, sort them. Uh, we will look for the smallest uh, smallest value by timestamp, and take its hash and uh, return delta type because we are looking for delta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we will, uh, we will never uh, find shortest path. Oh, sometimes we, we do, but uh, we will find some path. Just some. Yeah. So uh, 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 the, uh, this algorithm is optimized for uh, smallest download possible, like number of downloads possible uh, by, by uh, amount. I will get there. Uh, but we, uh, from every metadata, we have multiple uh, links to uh, previous uh, states. But uh, we, we need to find something which will lead to us, lead, lead to it. Otherwise, we will uh, look for the closest snapshot, which will, we will look into delta links. Uh, uh, against, we are uh, looking for the smallest, ver smallest value. But now uh, we are sorting by less, and we are sorting them by distance to snapshot and not by timestamp. Because if we are doing full, uh, full restore, we are actually not interested uh, in searching a path. We are actually searching for the closest snapshot. And then uh, we will get hash and return uh, identifier of delta type. So, and now we have a path, which is just vector of any object. It can be metadata, snapshot, delta. And we need function, which will take uh, identifier and return uh, any object for us which is just like some, some sort of like download function. In this uh, uh, it's function which will take identifier and it will download for us as a coroutine, let's say. I don't care. And uh, we have uh, something which, uh, it's just like function which will give us a coroutine which will, uh, when it's finished, is download, uh, download uh, the object for us. And then we have a function convert to object which will take the identifier uh, some sort of callable which will give us a uh, asynchronous fetch, uh, coroutine of vector of bytes and uh, give us a task for any object. So uh, what we will do, we will uh, call the uh, uh, callable with our ID and when the callable return, us, uh, return uh, the coroutine for us, we will wait to download and uh, then we will unwrap it and then return. And fetch path function, which takes a uh, current state, uh, hash or name of the target, and uh, the callable which will uh, provide downloading facility for us, return task, uh, which will give us a vector of any objects, which uh, is whole path we, uh, we will download. First, we will uh, create empty path. 
we will uh, wrap uh, uh, the uh, we will create fetch object uh, lambda, uh, lambda, which is just down downloader for us with the fetchable function. And then uh, if we are in current state and uh, hash is exactly the same as our target, we don't need to do anything because we ask to uh, update to version we already have. But otherwise, we will uh, convert to identifier the target, download it, wait for download, and put it in, into path. That's like we, we downloaded first metadata, the, future, the metadata we are supposed to go. And now we will repeat. We will look at the last uh, point of the path. And if the uh, meta, if there are metadata, we will look uh, if current state and uh, hash uh, is same. If it's same, we just ask for the metadata, like the latest version, and this, uh, it's uh, actually the same version we already have. So we return only part with the metadata. But otherwise, we will select next uh, uh, point in the graph with our metadata we just download and our current state, fetch the object, wait for it, and put it into path. If we got the delta, uh, we will uh, put the uh, uh, metadata from the delta because we, we just download it. So we just un unwrap it and put it uh, into path and, and place it on path. If it's a snapshot we, uh, we got, we just return path because uh, if you, uh, you got snapshot, you can actually do the update itself because you don't need anything else. So the state M is just state N plus path from between N and M. And the path is just delta, delta, and at the end there's metadata. <coughs> so the application is uh, some state in subject one, and then, uh, but subject one can be uh, shared between multiple uh, states. But uh, when you start updating, you just create cop copy of state, you will get the delta, apply the delta, you will get subject two, and state points to subject two. And then uh, application will automatically change, uh, oh, apply uh, another delta, sorry, and you will get subject three, and then will uh, automatically switch to a uh, new uh, subject. So uh, the uh, result of the update mechanism is visible only when it's ready. So your application will always be in st stable state. So function update2 will take atomic shared pointer of current state, target to, uh, where we are going to update, and callable, uh, which will do downloading for you, and return task uh, as, uh, with update result. So we will load the uh, uh, old state. We will fetch the whole path between uh, old state and uh, our target. Wait for it. Yeah. Wait for it. Then pipe it into a fault write function. Uh, and we will uh, apply uh, re reversed uh, the path uh, against old state with uh, some functor apply update traits, I will show later. And at the end, we will get new state. And if old state uh, was uh, not null pointer and uh, new state is same as old state, we just already on the latest version, we don't need to do anything. But otherwise, we will need to store the new state and make the uh, update uh, state visible to user and return, we were updated to this new state. So, apply functor is uh, some t uh, update traits you provide. Because if you are creating update system, you don't want to write uh, everything multiple times. You want to only write uh, uh, specific, uh, specific code for your uh, data structure. So in this time, uh, we will get there. Um, Okay, so uh, it's a helper for the uh, fault function. So if we have previous state, which is immutable, and we got any object, we will just uh, return new state. 
shared state uh, by visitor function, which will take any object inside of the variant and uh, uh, look at it uh, and call uh, operator uh, callable operator call in this function again with specific type. So if we get state and we got snapshot, we just need to uh, uh, deserialize the snapshot with some traits we provide and uh, provide empty metadata and return a shared state uh, immutable. And that's all. If we got delta, uh, we will look for the subject delta patch and apply it uh, with some function user provides for our type and empty metadata. And <coughs> if we got metadata, we will just take, uh, we calculate the hash of the subject, check it, and if it match, uh, matches, if it doesn't match, we will throw exception because there was something wrong. Uh, maybe someone mani manipulated with the, uh, or there was some attack. Otherwise, we will create new state with preview subject and metadata we just got. Okay, so example update traits looks like this. We need uh, only five function for any data structure you want to update. First, how you calculate hash of your data structure. It's easy if you have like vector of bytes or vector of strings, but uh, for some maps, it can be more complicated. So some subject type uh, you're updating and it will give you some sort of hash, uh, hash, uh, hash type. How, how do you calculate difference between two objects? For vector of bytes, it can be BSDF, but, it, but uh, from perspective of the update system, you just uh, care about vector of bytes and it's transparent. How do you apply difference? You will take uh, the old sub, uh, subject and the uh, patch file, goes from previous function and uh, give us new subject type. And serialize function, we will take uh, subject type and return vector of bytes because we need to, uh, sometimes we need to do the full update, we need to serialize it, and then we need to deserialize it and get subject type from it. Only five functions you need uh, for any type, data type you want to update. And from perspective of user, it looks like this. You're updating. And then uh, some task in your application needs to use uh, the subject. So it will get pointer. And meanwhile, you can update it. And when you switch it, if you didn't use share pointer, you will have a dangling reference, something which was released or expensive copy. So use share pointer, it's better. And then you start another task and you will get a handler to another subject and you will uh, do something else. Because uh, every time application is doing something with your data, you are updating. In my case, I'm working on AV. So I have like a detection a database. I need to uh, hold, uh, hold on because I'm doing some scan. So uh, the task is not short, but it's not that long. But uh, taking uh, atomic share pointer uh, and read it, it's cheap. So user API looks like this. We have like stream of the updates for type uh, we are updating and we provide update traits for uh, type. We have the uh, share, atomic share pointer representing state we are in, and we have function update two, which will take hash or name, and uh, we provide it uh, some, somehow how to, how to download it, and it will give us a result. Then we have a function get, which will give us shared pointer to current state. If we are in some state, we'll load it. If the uh, state is not there, we are like empty, we will empty, and otherwise we will return uh, share pointer to a subject, if it's empty, okay. And then uh, we have serialized uh, current state function, which will just serialize current state we are in, because your application wants to be uh, persistent. So if you restart the application, you want to still contain the data. So you, you want to be able to uh, save it. And you can use same function for that, same mechanism. So you will just uh, take uh, your current state and serialize the state, and that's all. Serialized state uh, will take the st uh, state and return vector of bytes. If it's empty, no state available. Otherwise, it will concatenate uh, the metadata and uh, subject some somehow to some file and uh, return uh, bytes. 
Otherwise, uh, there will be a function decentralized state, which will take optional of span uh, of bytes and return a share pointer of a bit state. Somehow split them, uh, 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 create part of the snapshot and uh, metadata. It's just part and use the same mechanism as before to fold it. So we will take empty state uh, with part and the upper part uh, functor as before. And we will uh, resume uh, when application starts. It, it can do this, like update itself from offline storage. So uh, constructor is empty, and uh, other constructor will take optional uh, with bytes, with span of bytes. So if you uh, start your uh, stream with something like load file, and the load file will return empty uh, optional if the file is not there. Otherwise, it will return, or it will return span of bytes. So you can uh, uh, call it, uh, put it into function decentralized state and get current state. Simple. Okay, and by user, it's used like this. You have like mine, and you have the stream with map, uh, some map updater, and uh, function which will download config bin, oh, load it from storage and a function uh, which will update uh, everything. And uh, if it's updated, it will store the file because uh, the system told you there was actual update that happened. Uh, so you will store it into a config bin and then uh, you can wait for update when, when you start because you want the application to be actually in a valid state. And uh, you have some sort of scheduler which will update the application every 10 minutes, maybe. And when you need to do something with uh, the data, uh, data itself, you have like task, uh, you will just get the handle and do something with it. And when you are finished, you just release it. The essential part is uh, you will get the from stream, uh, uh, there's something, yeah, there is a missing constructor. You have like uh, always latest like Bob, and uh, every time you do something, you will just get from, uh, from the pointer to it and uh, use it. You uh, you don't want to have something like shared uh, point, uh, like reference to uh, data you are updating because if you have reference to uh, data you are updating, you can have data, data races, you can have inconsistencies. So you you, you should always use. Uh, Copy on write mechanism with shared pointers. It's really useful. So, as, as the start of the present, present, represent, uh, presentation, uh, I told you the uh, objective is I need to update an object uh, of 100 million of clients quickly and whenever I want. I actually kind of lied because uh, I just uh, did part of it, and but uh, I reduced the problem into delivering 32 bytes of, with hash to all clients in timely manner. And the client will do it on, on its own, the updating mechanism. I showed you uh, how you can model algorithm into a code, verbs and nouns, value types, strong types uh, makes your code easy to reason about. C++ is still fun. And for me, my use cases are as I said, uh, uh, AB signatures database, or uh, synchronization of uh, uh, configuration across the clusters, and also over the air content uh, updating, uh, updating of anything, and many more. But uh, let's say we have a virtual file system, map of uh, path, and content of the files. And uh, we, we have uh, speci specific VF, VF trait uh, to update them. So we have like function which will calculate hash of the whole virtual file system for uh, each file name and uh, uh, its content is part of the hash. Difference is uh, two file systems and we can compare them for difference uh, if there is additional, if there is rem rem removal, if it's uh, update, uh, we calculate uh, the difference uh, with BSD traits. 
and otherwise we will compress the uh, difference, also the zip, and return it. And then uh, we can apply the difference. We decompress it, deserialize it, and for uh, for we will create copy of current uh, state or file system. For every change, if it's additional, we will insert the file. If it's removal, we will re remove the file. If it's update, we will update the file with apply difference from BS, uh, with bsdiff. And uh, otherwise, uh, return result and serialize. It's just serialization of the whole file system. And the serialize is for like opposite op operation. And that's how you will get simple grid, actually. Thank you. <laughs> Any question? Why didn't you have a manifest of like uh, you have all the graph there and, and you can uh, calculate shortest path or anything like that? Why are they copying? Uh, yeah, uh, question was, uh, yeah. question was uh, why uh, I'm doing all the hopping and not like looking at the full graph and finding the short path. The reason is uh, I don't want to have like uh, anywhere visible full graph because it's a file I will need to update every time. And uh, if I update the file every time, it's not imitable. And uh, because of the caching, uh, the users uh, will get the update slower than uh, they should, because if I always create new file and not uh, change anything, and then with some mechanism like push notification, I push uh, the information about the latest version, I can actually know that uh, the file is there and uh, it has content I expect. If a client will need to look at the whole graph, it will download uh, maybe a few kilobytes of uh, information about the graph, and it will, it will always grow. But uh, the uh, delta files and metadata, they are actually really small. And the uh, updates are, can be like a few kilobytes only. And uh, that's the reason for the hoping, because that's how uh, I get like, uh, it's not the most op optional solution, but it's uh, optional, uh, optional uh, enough. Uh, the graph always contains uh, one hoop uh, to previous node, so I always know if I'm in timestamp in f uh, future and I'm going uh, to past, there will always there will always be some path. And one uh, like I found uh, uh, is every hour I will create a uh, jump uh, two hours back. Every two hours I will create jump four hours back. And uh, so every, every day I will create jump one week, one week back. So if, if you are a user and you uh, turn your computer on only on weekends, you will probably get only like three or four jumps maximum. You will never download 1,000 files. OK, any other question? OK, uh, I, I will try to uh, paraphrase the question. You, you, uh, you ask uh, if you can use this uh, like whole code or just the idea with shared pointers? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, in whole library, there is no concept of files, only uh, like uh, on the uh, border uh, with user interface. Your application can store it in file, it can download it from internet, but uh, the library itself doesn't care uh, where you get your files and where it's stored. And uh, uh, like what, what we are updating is in memory. If you want to actually go to files, you need to like, uh, create something which behaves as a data structure from perspective of the uh, application, but internally it's a file. Because uh, personally, I hate, uh, it's too strong word, uh, that every update system I saw works over files. I think uh, philosophically, you don't, uh, uh, files are just like implementation detail for you. You're actually uh, interested in dictionary or some graph you, you need, or map. And uh, how it's stored the, uh, should, shouldn't matter. So actually what I'm doing is everything is in memory. OK, uh, did you ask, did I answer your question? Yes, OK. Any other question? OK, thank you. Thank you.